Mary had a little man, man, man. The fall. We believe that all men are created equal. To the magnificent mosaic that is America. A radio beacon, two radio beacons. I have a dream. Change has come to America. Knock, knock. Who's there? It's a figment of your imagination. Randy Road Show. Turn up your mind. Oh, don't we talk. have got to defeat Donald Trump. And we have got to elect Hillary Clinton and Tim Kaine. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Crap. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, oh, this is, this is the real world that we live in. Trump is a bully and a demagogue. Uh -oh. Trump, Trump has made bigotry and hatred the cornerstone of his campaign. Uh oh. Oh no. Uh oh. Thank you. Trump is a danger for the future of our country and must be defeated. Nice try, Bernie. Nice try. Oh crap. Oh boy. Oh crap. Oh boy. Oh, oh, oh boy. Oh, oh, oh. Here's Debbie Wasserman Schultz this morning. Good morning, Florida. Bad audio, I know, but. It is so wonderful to be able to be here in my home, with my home state. All right, everybody now, settle down. Settle down. Everybody settle down, please. Okay. All right, we have a big program. We have a big program today. Let's hear. Let's be respectful. Please be quiet so Debbie can speak. Oh. No. Okay. Everybody, let's hear from our speakers. We no. Have speakers as well. <laughs> no. Thank you all so much. Okay. <laughs> oh, this is not going well. Day one, everybody. Yesterday, I had the great honor of speaking to both President Obama and Hillary Clinton. <laughs> I thanked President Obama for the honor of serving as the chair of the Democratic National Committee and being able to watch his back and bring him across the finish line in 2012, which we did on the shoulders of Florida's voters. Didn't we, Florida Democrats? Okay. Yes, we sure did. <laughs> and we're gonna do it again. The, um, I also spoke, I also had the, I also had the privilege of speaking to Hillary Clinton. <laughs> and she thanked me for my service. We had a wonderful conversation she asked me and I committed to her that I would serve as a surrogate oh, no. throughout this campaign so that we could make sure that she is oh. able to help build on the progress that we've been able to make <laughs> for the last eight years. Because we have a lot of work to do. Oh my God. This is our day one, everybody. Our day one. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. I'm hyperventilating. I know. It takes your breath away, doesn't it? It's like this is our day one. Uh, the Russians have sabotaged the American election, according to the Clinton campaign. I really, this is so bizarre and crazy. And all right, let, let, let me start where we need to start. All right, before we talk about what has happened, uh, who's being accused of doing it, what that means, and how the hell we're going to win. You know where we need to start? We need to start with the freaking polling because the polling is painful. It's painful, people. Donald Trump has pulled ahead 
by many, many points with the uneducated white man. Okay, he he and and this is America. So that's a big chunk of the voters. The uneducated. He loved. I love the uneducated. I love you, man. It's terrible. This is frightening to me. Okay. Now I will say this: there there are things known as convention bounces. People get them, and then the antibiotics kick in, and uh, you know they use the quell, and it all goes away. But right now, uh, disease has set in, and we are behind. We are behind the Trump, which is not a place you want to be. It's just gross. The thought of it makes me, it gives me the ooty guts, okay? I can't go there. And so we must get away from the behind of Donald Trump, and we must do it now. You understand what I'm saying to you? Okay. So here's the, the worst news in this polling is that... 68% of Americans, 68% of Americans, not of Democrats, not of Republicans, of all Americans, do not think Hillary Clinton is honest or trustworthy. Now, that's not news to most people. What is news to most people is that they do think Donald Trump is, and they're evenly divided. Evenly divided between the... the the Donald Trump and 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 whether and oh I'm really okay uh independence independence have gone well it's 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 43 percent of the independents now say that Donald Trump is their guy 43 and before before the convention it was 34 Clinton 31 Trump before the convention, independents were breaking, you know, they hadn't, uh, independents are independents because they don't make up their mind until, you know, way later. I don't know what they need to see. I, I really, I mean, does he have to wear the armband? Does he have to, like, put the, the yellow star on and say, oh, no, I'm just deputizing people? Really? I mean, how much more can we can we see before, you know, you have to decide? Uh, they haven't seen enough. But the interesting, horrible thing is that independents were split 34, 32 uh, 34, 31 Trump before the convention and after the convention, 43% of independents say that they back Trump. Now, that's frightening to me. That's that's scary. And and the favorability rating of Donald Trump went through the roof after this, uh, you know, dog and pony show he had. 46% of registered voters say they have a positive view of Donald Trump. 46% of this country say they have a positive view of Donald Trump. And he has double-digit margins over Hillary Clinton on handling the economy and handling the ISIS terrorism. He has double-digit leads over Hillary Clinton on those two things. And 50-50, the country thinks Donald Trump can manage our foreign policy. 50-50, the the country is evenly split. 52% now say Trump is running for president for you, for the good of the country, that he's not in it for himself, he's doing it for you. Only 44% of Americans think Hillary Clinton is running for you. Only 44% of Americans think that Hillary is doing anything uh, uh, except serving herself. Uh, The people who call him honest and trustworthy went from the mid-30s to 43%, and less than, about 30% think Hillary is honest and trustworthy. Can you see the trouble we're in? Can you see this? So I want you to keep those numbers. Now, I, you know, it could be a post-convention bounce and we will see how our convention makes Hillary bounce. Bounce them, baby, bounce them. On Friday, I guess. Uh, But I thought that that's where we needed to start. You need to know that this country is falling in line with Donald Trump. They are saying he's fine with them. They think he's um, he's more apt to do something positive for them with regard to the economy, with regard to fighting ISIS. They think that he's doing this for America, not for himself. They think he's honest and trustworthy. And the, 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 the difference between Donald Trump and Hillary are double digits and Donald Trump is ahead. You got that? So he's emboldened is what it is. Now, 
over the weekend when we saw this dump of these uh, emails and, you know, uh, they have a searchable engine, the WikiLeaks does. So it's not like, uh, you know, I'm going to pretend or you've read 20,000 of them. You don't have to. You can do a quick keyword search and you can find that they try to sabotage Tim Canova, who's running against Debbie Wasserman Schultz here in beautiful Florida, where we had two more. Sh- we had. We had another uh, nightclub shooting over the weekend, which no one will talk about. It was a teen nightclub, you know, one of those things where uh, no alcohol is served. I never I never thought that was a great idea. Never let Jessica go to those. However, there was one in Fort Pierce. They had a teen party and somebody we don't know who uh, started spraying bullets up and down the street and two kids are dead. So we know that. And then we never did get to cover the story of Charles Kinsey, who was shot in the leg in North Miami the other day for trying to protect his patient, an autistic guy who ran away from the assisted living home. And they shot him. And when Charles Kinsey asked the cop, why did you shoot me? My, I was flat on my back. My hands were over my head. I told you I didn't have a weapon. My hands were obvious, you know, obvious and easy to see. The cop says, I don't know. I don't know why I shot you. So we have that. And then we never got to the story of Detective Detective Newman Raja, who also shot a black motorist. He was a drummer in a band, and he was coming home from a gig one night, uh, uh, late at night. And, there, you know, his car broke down, and he pulled over to the side of the road, and he was trying to get uh, AAA to come and help him. Uh, and a detective, a uh, plainclothes detective, came first and decided to shoot him. And then after that guy shot this poor guy on the side of the road who was coming home from a gig, uh, he staged uh, a 911 call that turned out to be false, saying that, uh, oh, this guy has a gun and he's fleeing. None of that was true. But we don't get to talk about this anymore because we're having conventions. And it turns out that there was this big document dump uh, by WikiLeaks over the weekend of the Democratic National Committee's emails Uh, A lot of it was opposition research about Donald Trump, which I don't know why nobody wants to tell you that. Uh, But that's what the they say they were Russian hackers. There's this uh, company that was called in uh, to take a look at what was going on. Their name is CrowdStrike. Good name, by the way. If it wasn't Dark Horse Broadcast, I would name it CrowdStrike. I like that name. I think that's very strong. I think the logo opportunities are there. I like it a lot. Anyway, uh, CrowdStrike has said that the intruders so thoroughly compromised the DNC's system that they were also able to read all the email and chat traffic. They gained access to the entire database of opposition research uh, that that the Democratic Party was doing on Donald Trump. And apparently uh, they got to... uh, read all the emails that went back and forth from officials inside the DNC, including Debbie Wasserman Schultz, and that and 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 they were horrible. They were gonna question Bernie's religion. Uh I mean there there were so many hideous, hideous uh emails. Some of them were really, really bad. They were floating ways to undermine Bernie's entire candidacy. Uh I mean the 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 four worst emails uh they're they're just they're terrible. Uh, Debbie Wasserman Schultz said, let's call Bernie Sanders campaign liars. Uh, Let's accuse them of uh, violence in Nevada. You know, uh, let's laugh at him. You know, all the really, really crazy, uh, horrible, disgusting stuff. And they're supposed to be, you know, helping primary candidates in uh, not just presidential elections, but down ticket elections, too. And that's why I bring up Tim Canova, who's primarying uh, Debbie Wasserman Schultz in Florida's 23rd district, which is here where, where I am. And uh, Tim Canova, they, they, they told him uh, he couldn't have access to the voter files. And then uh, Tim uh, said, uh, you know, he was going to sue to get access to the voter files. And then they said, we need a response for Tim Canova. And they said, well, let's say, uh, let's just put it out there that Tim Canova was offered the files and he declined to use them. Uh, it, it, I mean, it's just crazy. It's crazy what they did. Now... The creepy part about all this is they've been in the Democratic National Committee servers, whoever, well, they know who it is, or or, or some people are saying they know who it is. CrowdStrike has been apparently talking to the Washington Post and uh, telling them that it was, uh, you know, these two groups, they call one Cozy Bear and one, you know, a Fancy Bear, which they say are both working with the Russian government. And they say that uh, these hackers had access to the DNC networks 
for over a year. For over a year. But no financial information, no donor information, no personal information uh, had been accessed or taken. They were only interested apparently in two things, and that was finding out what dirt the DNC was compiling against Donald Trump and dumping this, because whoever has them is who's releasing them, uh, dumping this the day of and the day before and the weekend before the Democratic National Convention. Now, I'm going to play you uh, what Hillary's spokesperson said um, on uh, Meet the Press this weekend. Uh, and he just f- flat out said it was the Russians. The Russians are doing this because they prefer Donald Trump. So I have to ask, what is the reaction of the Clinton campaign to these DNC leaked emails suggesting that top officials, including the CFO there, were actively discussing ways to to hurt Bernie Sanders in the primaries? Well, I think the DNC needs to look into this and take uh, appropriate action, and I'm sure that they will. What's disturbing to us is that we uh, experts are telling us that uh, Russian state actors broke into the DNC, stole these emails, and uh, other experts are now saying that they are the Russians are releasing these emails for the purpose of actually helping Donald Trump. I don't think it's coincidental that these emails were released uh, on the eve of our convention here. And and that's disturbing. Uh, and I think we need to be concerned about that. I think we need to be concerned that we also saw uh, at last week at the Republican convention that Trump and his allies made changes to the Republican platform uh, uh, to make it more pro-Russian. And, and we saw him talking about how NATO shouldn't intervene to defend, necessarily should intervene to defend our Eastern European allies allies if they're attacked by Russia. So I think when you put all this together, it's a, it's a disturbing picture. And I think voters need to reflect on that. You know, I don't disagree that voters need to reflect on whatever information uh, we can get our hands on about who's hacking into the DNC and what they were looking for and that they were only looking for what the DNC had collected with regard to opposition research on Donald Trump and uh, what Donald Trump's position on Russia is, that Donald Trump says that, you know, the little Eastern European countries that have pulled out of Russia, you know, like uh, Estonia, where I've been. I mean, I've been to a lot of these little um, nations that are trying to build futures for themselves outside side of Putin's of Russia. And, uh, you know, Donald Trump says, well, you know, I'll only defend them. They're Na- they're part of NATO. There's 28 countries in NATO. Russia is not one of them. We're there to defend these little allies of ours against an enemy that likes to invade like Russia likes to invade Georgia. You know, remember that with McCain in the middle of the last election. Right. So it is horrifying that the Russians may have influenced our elections right now that that's what they have done and that they've done it on the behest of donald trump who loves putin who says oh we'll defend our nato allies if they're able to afford it if they could pay us then we'll 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 defend them now nato has only been called to do that one time you know where if one is attacked um all are attacked that that response nato's only been called one time and that was for us after 9 11 2001 that's the only time. So this is a crazy story. I mean, it's really, it's, it's, it's not bad crazy. I don't know exactly if it's true. I, I know that it's in reputable newspapers that it's true. But I have no c- way of figuring this. The Russians are never going to talk about this. But if they have a preferred candidate, it would explain why Donald Trump is so complimentary to Vlad, the impaler why he loves him so, why he talks him up, why he sounds more and more like Vlad than any American leader we've ever seen at a presidential podium or a convention asking for your vote to be president. I've never heard anybody just love on Vladimir Putin this way. It's just never happened. So let's be really careful today Because I'll tell you what, over the weekend I posted one little thing because I knew Debbie wasn't going to make it through. And people just attacked me. So let's be careful. 22 after.